What's the most fun you're legally allowed to have with thread? Why, making jewelry on your Baby Luck Serger, of course. I'm Kathy, this is Sewing Tech Talk, and we're gonna have some fun today. So we have a very special giveaway for today's video. I've put together a collection of jewelry findings, which is what you're going to need when you play with making jewelry on your serger, and some really fun threads to play with. So it's a lot that you need to start playing on your serger to making some jewelry. So I put together that collection. Every time you like, share, or comment, now there's only one available. So every time you like, share, or comment, you're entered for a chance to win. So good luck, and because you want to play. So now what we're going to do today is we're going to create some cord using thread on the Baby Lock Serger. And the Baby Lock Serger I'm going to use is the Triumph, but any of the sergers with automatic thread delivery are absolutely ideal for this. And we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to the machine. But what's the stuff that you need to create some really fun jewelry? So, for example, we're going to be making some different size cords. This is a pretty big cord. It's stitched over the top of a rat tail cord. And then we can get down all the way to a much finer cord that's just the thread. The machine can sew in the air and make that chain with just thread. So we can use that in creating jewelry as well. So we might want to add some embellishments or beads to our chain, and we can do that using fishing line. This necklace was created uh, just over the top of the fishing line, and the beads were added on at the serger while we were sewing. I'm going to be using the standard foot, but I'll also be playing with the beading foot and the elastic foot, depending on the size cord that we're going to want to cover. And playing with all different kinds of threads. Now, you may or may not be a jewelry person. You may not be super excited about making jewelry on your serger, but stay with me because we're going to learn a whole bunch of stuff about our serger that allows it to do this, and we're going to be making some adjustments that's really going to help you when you get down to regular serging on your baby lock serger. So this necklace, for example, was made with cord, which is fun. I braided the three cords together and I changed the end of this uh, pendant. Now it wasn't that color. I went to the special store where I got my special um, uh, enamel paints. I think you know what those are. And painted that to match the cord. I used thick, cord, thick, thick threads, thin threads. I used different kind of rat tail cords. We're going to talk about that when we get up to the machine. So you have a handout for today and it talks about the techniques we're going to use at the serger to create cord and to cover cord and also the cool technique where you're adding beads to as you go. So uh, I have lots of different fun stuff to share. Let's get to the serger where we can start to learn how we can create this. Oh, 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 and one more thing. On your handout, just it has nothing to do with a serger, just because you need this, I have this uh, instruction sheet for how to make these adorable earrings out of rickrack. Nothing to do this with a serger, but you just have to have that. So that's on your handout as well. Techniques that we're going to cover on the handout. Go get your handout. You can go to the description, and it's usually highlighted in blue. And it's um, you click on that link, and it takes you to a landing page. Look around and see, there's all my handouts there, and this one's a doozy. There's lots of instruction on this, and lots of inspiration, I hope. So, go get your handout. I'll meet you over at the serger in just a second, and let's get started making some really cool jewelry. Look at this one. This one just wants to go out to dinner. So here we are now with the serger, and why is the serger great for doing this technique? Well, this is a baby lock serger, and this happens to be the Triumph. It's an eight thread serger. It's, um, it does the cover stitch, and it does the overlock stitch. Now, we're playing mostly an overlock stitch today. We can do a really nice uh, cord in, uh, made out of thread in the chain or cover stitch area. We're playing mostly though in the overlock section. So you can get a baby lock serger that's a four thread that does the overlock functions. The eight thread baby lock sergers do the chain and cover stitch at the same time as they can do the overlock stitch. Now this machine has the automatic thread delivery system. That means that instead of tension dials, the machine literally measures the amount of thread that it delivers to the needle. So we can stitch in the air, we don't necessarily need fabric, and that's what we're going to be doing today. So now, because it has that automatic thread delivery system, the Baby Luck Serger can handle uh, a different variety of threads. 
don't have to adjust any tensions because there's no tensions to adjust. And you can use a big, beefy, cool, sexy serger thread in a serger that you would never use in a sewing machine because uh, it just wouldn't go through the needle. So for example, this is a Glamour and it's a metallic um, thread and it's a number eight. Now thread sizes, they're kind of weird. Uh, thread sizes, um, the numbers in thread the bigger the number, the smaller the thread. And the smaller the number, the bigger the thread. So this is a size 8, and it's so much bigger than these that are a size 12. So if you look at the edge of the Glamour thread, you can see that it's made up of a whole bunch of other little threads. Well, we can do the exact same thing. We can put a combination of threads together to get a nice big beefy serger thread that would be great in our project. So for example, I can use two of the size 12 threads and it's about the same size as that number eight. Don't try to add the numbers, it doesn't work that way. I can also use four or five of these size 30 or 40 weight threads to get the same size as that number eight. Thread comes even thinner. This is a size 80, which is super thin, and I can combine it with a thread that might be a little bit smaller than that 8, and I can get another combination there. I can use metallics, I can use cottons, I can use whatever thread that I want. So you can really put together some unique combinations to when you're making your projects. Now we're going to be playing with some feet. I have the standard foot on the machine and I've threaded the machine up with some um, multiples of this. I'll show you that in just a little bit. But we're going to be playing with a couple of extra feet that are not standard to the machine. This is the Baby Lock elastic foot and it has a hole here and here to guide the very, very thin fishing line through. We're going to be covering that. And there's a groove on the bottom to keep that fishing line in place. It's also good for elastic, which is what it's called for. Now this is the beading foot. And this is the foot that's made for, uh, maybe actually it's made for putting a string of beads on the edge of, say, a bridal veil. So it's basically made to put beads on the side. You can put some uh, invisible thread in there. This will stitch the, th the beads on the edge of the bridal veil. Looks like you've done hand sewing all day long, but it goes at the speed of a serger. We're going to be using this foot to put in some cord. And I have two different sizes of cord. This is a rat tail or a satin cord. This one's a little bit larger than this one. They both will work on the serger. Basically, if it fits in that groove, you're good to go. So now, let me show you on the machine how I've put the threads on in. So on the back of the machine, back here, what I have is I have threads, uh, just five different smaller weight threads. This is the Glamour. It's going into the lower looper. That's that size eight thread. Now these are smaller threads. I have some just sitting on the back of the serger, some on the little uh, spool um, supports that come with the machine. This is kind of neat. This is the Glamour box. You can get a whole box of Glamour thread and it also acts as a thread stand. So I just have some thread and a little spool in there and it's coming up, up through. So I have those five really small threads coming in as one into the serger. So I've threaded that already up already. So if it fits in that threading port, you can use it in the serger. So now, Enough talk about thread, let's get to making some jewelry. So, let me close up the machine and we are ready to stitch. Now, this is set up in overlock and I have the overlock needle in the right hand position. I can stitch in the air because it has that automatic thread delivery. So what I can do, I just started to stitch it. You don't have to do anything special with this overlock stitch. You just hit the gas. Oop, you got to lower the presser foot. Don't forget to do that. Hit the power pedal and it's just going to stitch. And it's going to do that overlock stitch as if fabric was there, but you don't need fabric because it's a baby lock serger. So this is what it looks like and I have this set on the a, which means that I want the most thread going to my serger. On the side of the machine, there's A, B, C, or D. And you look up the stitch that you want on the quick reference guide, it tells you what's setting. But A gives you the most. Now I'm going to turn it down to C. 
just a couple clicks that's all I did my hands never left my body and I'm just going to stitch now nothing has changed except I put it on C and you can see ha 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 that that stitch is just that chain that I've made is just a little bit smaller than the other one. So I can use these in my project. Now, depending on the size cord I'm going to cover, this might be great for the bigger cord. This might be great for the smaller cord. So let's cover some cord. I'm going to take the standard foot off. And I'm just going to snap the beading foot on. Now, I've changed it to C, so let me grab my smaller cord. I think that's going to be the right size, and you can experiment to see what works. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay the cord on the slot, and I'm just going to turn the hand wheel a couple of stitches just to make sure that it's grabbing that cord. The secret to covering cord or covering the fishing line is to keep the cord, whatever you're covering, to the right of the needle. That's it. Now this foot's really going to help me do that and that elastic foot will too. So I'm just going to stitch along and it's going to cover that cord. Now one thing you need to remember is there's nothing for the feed dogs to grab. You're literally stitching in the air. So you're going to want to take your hand in the back and you're going to give a gentle pull to pull that cord on through. You don't necessarily have to do it so much when you're just making a chain, but there's nothing for the machine to grab, so you're the stitch length on this cord. It's just a gentle pull. Now check this out. By having the cord in there, it really keeps those stitches nice, even. That's the same stitch, that's the same C. I just put a cord in there. So you can see, you can create all kinds of multiple different things and put the same thing in the one piece of jewelry if you want to. So that's pretty cool. Now let's take this and let's go a little bit smaller. Let's go down to that fishing line. So I'm gonna take off this satin cord I'm just going to stitch off. And now I'm going to put that fishing line in there. Now, oh, before I leave, this cord that I created, that's the cord I used for this little piece of jewelry. I created three and I just braided them together. Look at how beautiful that is. I used a metallic thread in there. You can go through your threads and, oh my gosh, threads that you never even thought you'd use, you're going to use them. Metallic thread makes it shine. And that's what jewelry is all about. So let's take our fishing line. And we're just going to cover it for now. And in a little bit, we're going to put the beads on. So let's grab the end of it. Got to find the end. I went and got this at the fishing line store, which is the garage. I'm going to put it back. This is a pound, uh, 15 pound. I'm sure you can use smaller. I'm sure you could use a little bit bigger. Now, I'm not going to use the beading foot. I'm going to use my elastic foot for that. So this foot's just going to snap off. And this elastic foot has a hole here and here and a groove on the back. I'm just going to put my fishing line in and it's going to hold that fishing line in that special spot. I'm sure you remember, that's right, it's to the right of the needle. Put it through there and snap this foot onto the machine. There we go, I found that sweet spot. Now, I don't want this big, I want this to be, let's just say I'm doing a rolled hem, because it's very, very small. And the rolled hem is the smallest little thing that a serger can do. So I'm gonna set my machine up for a rolled hem, just as if I was sewing on fabric. I'm gonna put it to stitch selector D. I'm gonna turn the knob down here to rolled hem. And I'm gonna select the stitch width, which is M, which is the setting for a rolled hem. 
Now, I have that big juicy thread in the in the lower looper. Now, on a rolled hem, you don't see it that much. I probably should put a thinner thread in there. We'll see what it looks like with this because it's all good if it's the look that you want to create. So let's stitch over this fishing line. Get that thread to the fishing line to the back. And remember, I'm going to have to give it a gentle pull because I'm the stitch length. Would you look at there? Look how pretty that is. It's a smaller setup. Yeah, it's a little bit beefier thread in there. Maybe I'll take a couple threads out. Maybe I'll adjust the thread quantity that I have going in there. Remember, it's all just me choosing the threads that I want to put in. Now, let's put some beads on this chain. And I'm not going to use the elastic foot for that because beads do not fit through that little hole. So let me cut my fishing line and we're going to change over to just the standard foot. So I'm going to take this foot off. If they just pop on and off. Oops, got to lift the pressure foot up. Take that off. Now I'm going to put the standard foot on there. It does not have a place for me to guide this fishing line, so I'm going to have to do it by eye. It's not really a bit much of a problem. I'm just going to have to keep it to where? That's right, the right of the needle. And I went ahead and I've strung my beads on the fishing line. So now let's put them on. I'm going to take my fishing line, put it to the right of the needle, and just hold it and stitch over the top of it. Nothing has changed. I'm just positioning it to the right. I don't have that elastic foot to hold it on there. Now, let's put a bead on. So let's pull a bead on up. There it is. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the needle in the up position. I'm going to take my bead on my loop, raise my presser foot, and pull it to the back of the foot, lower my presser foot, and I'm going to keep that fishing line to where? To the right of the needle. And I'm just going to stitch some. That's what it looks like. It's a bead on a loop. Well, that's not where I want it. I want it to be right next to that cord. So I take my fishing line, I just give it a pull and shock a lock a boom there's my bead right next to my cord. It's really a fun way to add beads and it's really pretty easy as well. You can just stitch over the fishing line, have your beads pre-put on there, pull them on up as, you're get, as you stitch over the top of them, you just get them out of the way of that foot. So I promised you an even smaller chain. So in the sake of time, I'm getting a little long today. So I went and changed it over to just a chain stitch. That's just a single needle over here. I took out my other threads that I was doing the overlock, although I could have done them at the same time. And I put a thread in the cover stitch looper and one in the needle, and it's an even smaller stitch. And... Look at how cool that looks. That's even smaller. Oh my goodness. So I think you're going to have fun. Just do a combination of different chains. Look at the handout. It tells you through all of these different procedures and just start to put things together. You're going to enjoy making as much jewelry as any girl needs. They make great gifts. So I'm going to send it over to George. No matter which baby lock surgery you want, you're going to be lucky to have any one of them. So hope you enjoyed it. Go get the handout. Thanks for watching and let's go bling the world. Take it away, George. Thanks, Kathy. That was a great presentation as always. Don't forget, you can download that project that she has for you by clicking on the link below. You know, a serger can truly cut your sewing time by half and give you a much more efficient and better quality stitch. The problem is, Many sergers are difficult to use. The Baby Lock Celebrate has their original air threading feature where it threads both upper and lower loopers with a burst of air. Plus, it even threads 
both needles. This serger instantly can change to a rolled edge just by a turn of the dial and you get a beautiful finished rolled edge. It also works with a wide variety of decorative threads for doing a two thread overlock with a thick thread or even this special serger crochet technique that baby lock can do beautifully and this is shown with again thicker threads. Because it's easy to use you'll do more things like this. It also has a differential feed. Not only, only can you use this for gathering, but it gives you control on heavy fabric, on stretchy fabric with elastic, on sheer fabric perfectly. Now the Baby Lock Celebrate is available at a very special buy right now. But wait, we're including a special bonus. A bonus that includes uh, all this wonderful uh, decorative thread by Sulky and Madeira, as well as a six month online training membership by Baby Lock. This has a value of over $500 combined and it's included free. Plus, we are not charging for shipping and we have 0% financing available. But this is only while supplies last, so don't wait. Click on the link here. Call us at 1-800-865-9664. At Moore's, we carry the full line of Baby Lock sergers, from the most basic Baby Lock Vibrant, which offers an incredible quality serger on sale right now for $399, of course, to celebrate, as well as the popular Victory, Acclaim, and even the top model Baby Lock Triumph 8 thread serger that threads not only the loopers, but all the needles with a burst of air and can do up to eight threads in combination as well as the cover hem. And this is an amazing product. Speaking of cover hem machine, the cover stitch on the Euphoria is so amazing where you can sew stretchy knit and active wear and it gives you a flexible seam, but this also has automatic thread delivery so there's no tension adjustments. But let us help you decide on the right serger. Give us a call at 1-800-865-9664 and I'll have an experienced staff member go through the different features of the sergers, discuss what your interests are, and guide you through that serger purchase. Again, that's 1-800-865-9664. Bye for now.